She was just an outcast. He fought to protect her. I know what you are, Edward. Your skin is pale white and ice cold. You don't go out into the sunlight. Say it. Out loud. Say it. Vampire. Actually, I'm a glitter vampire. Together, they changed teenage cinema and created a whole slew of films and TV shows featuring vampires with hipster hair and sparkles. Being a vampire is great. You get all these clothes from Hot Topic and glitter. Oh, the glitter. But now one man, half human, half vampire, wants to put a stop to it all. There are worse things out tonight than vampires. Like what? Like me. The Daywalker returns to take a bite out of all the lame-ass vampires over the last ten years. We need to come up with a way to deal with Blade. He's already killed Belle and Edward. Barnabas is right. We should unite the clans and strike at him directly. We will win with numbers. Celine, call in the reserves. Give me a bit. My leather pants are too tight. <laughs> but what the vamps don't know is Blade has built his own team. We got bloodsuckers to kill. You guys ready? The Frog Brothers were born ready. Also prematurely. Does the word duh mean anything to you? Starring Wesley Snipes as Blade. Some motherfuckers are always trying to ice skate uphill. Christy Swanson as Buffy. I cannot believe... I'm doing this. I can't believe I'm in a graveyard with a strange man hunting for vampires on a school night. James Woods as Jack Crow. Let me just ask you one thing. After 600 years, how's that dick working? Pretty good? Anthony Hopkins as Van Helsing. Well, hello, Clarice. Hey, old dude, do you know what movie you're in? And Corey Feldman and Jameson Newlander as the Frog Brothers versus Luke Evans as Vladula, Kate Beckinsale as Celine, and John Depp as Barnabas. It's every lame and crappy vampire versus every badass neck sucker killing machine. This is World War V. So Blade, you're part of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, right? So do you think like you could like introduce me to Captain America and Iron Man? Motherfucker. Hello and welcome to Stinker Madness. I'm your host Justin. With me is Sam and Jackie. How are Sam and Jackie? Starting with Jackie. Like, I'm so good. Starting with Sam. Would be actually and followed by Sam, but I'm okay too. I think you guys are worth two starts each. Okay. Sweet. Times four. So equals like Mario Kart bullshit. Equals goodness. This is the podcast about bad movies by bad movie lovers. Uh this is gonna be a fun episode for us, I think. We're gonna start out with some User feedback. Mm. Mm. The all hate mail episode. Oh, yes. It's better than no mail. Oh, God, please let somebody have said something nasty about me personally. Uh, actually, you got a fine compliment today, but it's uh, from a uh, repeat commenter, uh, the Bad Movie Sunday One on Twitter, says that you have a lovely singing voice. <laughs> well. Oh, and now we've blown it. That it's was not, not hate mail, that was but not, I'll take it. That was not hate mail. <laughs> Why, thank you. <clears throat> Pedro Costa says, off of an oldie, an oldie but a goodie, our uh, showdown in Little Tokyo episode featuring Brandon Lee, says, and I believe this is directed to me, you say the crow is dumb. Wow, you're an idiot. (laughs) Now, I would like to mention, this is what he actually said. You say the crow, not capitalized, is dumb wow, (laughs) you're possessive an idiot. Hooked on phonics did not work for Maybe you. Maybe he tried Google Translate and it works as well as when we try Google Translate of other people's languages. Are you just judging him because his name is Pedro? I'm judging the way that he his is. sentence was structured mm-hmm. more than anything. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm judging Pedro because he's a fucking retard. Uh, all right. The crow sucks. <laughs> I stand by the fact that I hate the crow. I know everybody likes it and everybody thinks it's fucking cool because it's this thing that... Is like, oh, so tough and so cool and like, wow, look at him. And he's wearing a trench coat that's leather and he's killing all the guys and uh, stuff. 
and he's got like fire and he's like thematic. Fuck the crow. I it, don't. I can't remember the last time I even saw that. So I exactly, can't even. Exactly. I can't even tell you whether or not I thought it was worth a damn or not. Everybody I think wa- I saw it in high school. Everybody walked out of the '90s thinking that the crow was fucking sweet, and it sucks. It's fucking stupid. He's a ghost because he got killed. And so he, oh, and his fiance got killed too. He's murdered. So he goes into the bathroom and then puts on makeup and then he's the ghost of vengeance. He puts on makeup before he goes on his rampage. Oh, I thought that girlfriend just got raped a lot. She's dead. She's quite dead. And so is he. And so is he. Uh, they killed them both. Like I said, it's been a while. I, yeah, I, I liked the movie. Stop off at the bathroom and put on makeup. You know who likes the movie? Me and my brother. You and your brother. Well, I have bad news for you. The and 90- Pedro, my bro from across the internet. Yeah. The 90s are over, man. You know what? Pedro's right. You are an idiot. <laughs> no, you're an idiot. I, am, I have looked it up, and I am not an idiot. <laughs> you looked up. How do you look that up? You looked um, up Pedro's other comments to other movies. I looked, A, first I started in my pants. And then second, I looked at all of the people that, that think that I'm awesome. All right. Well, there you go. Well, thanks, Pedro, for the hate mail. Yeah, thank you. Keep it coming. No, fuck you, Pedro. (laughs) You're a douche. Uh, Now, you, however, Sam, you are also, you have been flamed quite a bit this week. Oh, have I? Mm. That's good. It turns out the majority of the internet thinks that Johnny Mnemonic is quite the good movie. (laughs) (laughs) And you know what? I expected. I I expected a certain amount of it because there's like a level of blinders to any of William Gibson's work. That just because William Gibson wrote it, even though what he wrote does not make it onto that screen, and what that's what's on that screen isn't good. Like if you're a William Gibson fan, you must defend it with a sword until the death, right? Right. But okay, let's let's have it. Okay, so meth, meth. I mean meth, meth, meth. Six one six says, "Is this a bad movie? I think it's really only outdated with Lawnmower Man s graphics. Otherwise, a decent and fun '90s film." Well, we had a nice time with it. Uh, it's not decent. And the graphics are not the only problem with it. The graphics are <laughs> a quibble. Uh, I, a, yeah, the graphics are a quibble, yes. A small quibble compared to everything else. <laughs> In the defense of this guy, uh, you know, I did go and say that that's as good as acting as Keanu Reeves ever did on top of that heap of trash. He wants his clothes laundered. J. John Burt uh-huh. says, I love this movie. Not even ironically. It's just a great damn adventure story with the feel of a 90s rave music video. Huh. Does the rave music <laughs> video come into effect when the dolphin appears? I guess. I don't know. And where's the adventure? Yeah, it's not very This is not an adventure. There's Indiana like four Jones locales in the movie. Is an adventure. Back to the Future is an adventure. Alan Quartermain movies are an adventure. This is not an adventure. This is a science fiction movie. And I want to say, well, Keanu can... Reeves did a really good job as Johnny whatever. Mnemonic. Johnny just, Mnemonic. Just Johnny. Just Johnny. All Woot. right, just Johnny. Woot for me says, yeah, this is a good good as opposed to a bad good movie for me too. I loved it. You're a dick bag. Yeah, screw you, Woot for me. <laughs> Vaughn Shaving Cream says. Woo. Now is that's, it Vaughn? that's a name that I can get behind. Is it Vaughn or Vaughn's like the supermarket? Vaughn. Oh. V-O-N. Vaughn Shaving Cream says, This was probably one of the worst podcasts I've ever listened to, especially since they didn't even know anything about the movie they were trying to bash. Oh. Not to mention, it is actually a cool movie to watch. Well, I like it when they when people say, like, oh, they didn't know anything about it. It's really nice when they would, like, specifically say something we missed. Or... And we could at least address why we didn't talk about it. Or if we... Uh, oh, go, you're right. Whoever Vaughn's Vaughn shaving, shaving cream, cream. You're right, we missed that. But Or give us an explanation. Yeah, like, yeah. Oh, this is what it's about, you idiots. Because I, I will agree with Vaughn Shaving Cream. We had no fucking clue what that movie was about. None. None at all. You know, I was thinking Vaughn Shaving Cream, just based off the name, was going to give us something awesome to talk about. But then my next question is, Von Shaving Cream, did you listen to the point five? Probably because not. Because we, we know about this movie. Sam fills us in with his boring bullshit. He did yeah. not tell us what the plot of the movie I was. I tried to explain it during the podcast, the the main episode, as much as I could. And this is coming from somebody that, like, has I've watched the movie as much as these people. I've been watching this shit since it came out. Mm-hmm. I mm-hmm. like this movie. Yeah. But at the same time, I can step outside and go, it's not good. It was quite terrible. It's quite terrible. Hmm. Yeah, so uh, thanks for the hate mail. I I enjoy the criticism, but bring examples next time. 
I just like the fact that we're getting mail. <laughs> no, I like the hate mail. Keep the hate mail coming. I, I like the hate mail. Thank you for taking the time out of your day to hate us. And, uh, you know, I don't want you to get hit by a bus because I, I like the hate mail. So thank you, Von Shaving Cream. You are now my favorite user. It was Mark Montana, but now it's Von Shaven Cream. And go fuck yourself. Uh, here's the streaming do's and don'ts for this week. All right. Not a whole lot this week. Okay. We're going to start with Monsters Dark Continent, which is a follow-up to the 2010 Monsters movie directed by Gareth Edwards, the dickhead that did Godzilla. Or... And, and the forthcoming Star Wars Rogue Squadron. Yeah. I'm, I'm familiar with the Gareth Edwards. Yeah. Uh, this was not directed by Gareth Edwards. Oh, this is... Piggybacking off of the Gareth Edwards. It's a sequel. It's an informal sequel. It's not really a sequel. It's like the... It's Some like, the studio had the rights and they... Yeah, like, kept wanting let's to keep, make a, se- uh, yeah. uh, a film that takes place at the same time, just in the same universe type, yeah. type thing. Jackie, your thoughts? I have no idea what this movie was about. None. I don't think the studio did either. Like, I, I couldn't figure it out. I couldn't figure out what happened at the end. Um, And then I was just like, wow, I wish I would have dropped my tea on my lap. At least I would have gotten some kind of shock for the evening i mean <laughs> emotional reaction i know oh, my crotch is burned that would have been better than this movie where i just kind of sat there and went huh i'm gonna say that if you liked the first one you'll probably like the second one however if you go into a movie with the title being named monsters and don't see it's not about monsters you're gonna be pretty pissed off huh. it's it's basically the same this guy does one thing this gareth edwards he's cr- now created a franchise of dodging what you're supposed to be of, putting on screen exactly huh. of not like oh, let's make it a, this this movie in particular is like let's make it about these two soldiers that have to there's a fucking war so monsters have invaded earth or they're in the earth or whatever sure and they're they're essentially kaiju and uh Meanwhile, there's also the Afghanistan war going on. So let's have a movie about the Afghan war and put some monsters in it. And then get caught up in the politics. Like, well, there's these two stories that need to be told here. Wait, do you remember that you're making a movie called Monsters? Yeah, but there's a story about this guy that really needs to be told. Well, then maybe you should make a fucking movie about him and yeah. not one called Monsters yeah, 2. Yeah, choose one. Choose one, you fucking dickbags. It's like Baba Hotep. Yeah. The, we need uh, to talk about... You know how people, the elderly, are getting forgotten in nursing homes. Okay, make that movie. I want to see Elvis and Black JFK fight a mummy. And mm-hmm. you didn't show me that. That's what you promised me. Then you're like, oh, but what about the elderly? Okay, that's fine. Go make that movie somewhere else. This please. is exactly what you have just, just described. The story about soldiers making a trek across a desert after their convoy has been hit and they're alone. Fine. Make that movie. But you know what it's it really got some monsters in it. Yeah, but what it really is is that uh you're afraid to make that movie. You're either afraid or limited by your budget. Yeah, but when you start bre- dragging that other story in, you're afraid that you can't make a movie about that that anyone will care about. So you've stuck that into something that people are already kind of invested in like oh I saw the first one I'll go see this now but then you've just like, oh I you've stuck the movie I yeah, actually want to make. the first one was that way as well. Oh. It was it was a a, a wilderness survival tale. Like, two people that are wandering across southern Mexico, oh, and there happens to be monsters. Well, yeah, that's... So if you like the first one, you like the second one. As far as Jackie and I go, do not do Monsters Dark Continent. No. Why is it called Dark Continent? Oh, I didn't watch it. No, I know, but it takes place in the Middle East during the day. Oh, I don't know, man. I don't know, either. Mysteries abound. Next up is uh, a classic. We might have... We might have... Two weeks in a row, we might have done blown, an episode. Yeah, done an Just episode. Just like kicked one down the road for two years. Yeah. Bill and Ted's Bogus Journey. I love this movie. It is so bad. It's awesome. It is Station. Station. <laughs> it's really, really, really dumb. I love it. I, I love, love it every second of it. I, I, of course I love it. It's... All right. <laughs> what does he say? Best of seven. Damn straight. <laughs> Like he just <laughs> death is not having it. <laughs> I like that they showcase death. Like death is gonna be a thing. Like 
oh my god, we've got to have Death so involved in this because he's such a character and like he's zany and wacky. Yeah. And, the, and all the folks are going to love Death. I and love Death. Death sucks, man. I think <laughs> I that, like that shit was great. Whatever that. I wish I could remember his whole spiel at the end when they're like doing the show and then he comes out with this little bebop in his sketch. He's like, sooner or later you'll dance with the Reaper. And then they toss us in the stand up bass. Yeah, it's awesome. It's so dumb. Oh, I love it. It's I so love dumb. it. I, I t- loved it too, Sam. I loved the Reaper in this movie. I think I, I think it's been about five years. Now, my question to you guys, if you are one of the interneters, and you're not a 36-year-old male that... Uh, Has watched this movie once every two years since he was 10. Right. If you came in and like, what's this Bill and Ted's about, and you saw Bogus Journey, what would you think? I think it's, a, it's just fun enough. Like, even though it's just goofy as shit, it's fun enough. <laughs> Is it? Even without the first one, I think it's fun enough. With the first one in mind, it's like sort of, it's just a cake almost made of entirely of icing. Like, you just keep eating the icing until you're full. And then, it, oh, there is a little cake in there, but not very much. It is, it's like the 90s in a can. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There's so many, there, there's too many references, and some of them are not okay. Like, they're okay to us because we're assholes, but um, there's some stuff that they say that is no longer socially acceptable. And uh, so I don't know, man. I don't know. If, I don't know if children, the children of the internet, would appreciate Bill and Ted's Bogus Journey. I think they would be like, those people in the '90s were fucking stupid. Huh. I still say, dude. So I say, totally do. One hundred percent do. It's retarded in all of the right ways. Yeah, I liked it. Love it. I love Station too. You got a righteously huge butt station. 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 <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then Death's like, I have been going to the gym and working out my butt too. <laughs> Nobody says anything to him. Like, Rrr. Nobody cares, Death. I love Death in that movie. He is so funny. Yeah, Death was my favorite character in that movie too. Booch and Sundance, the, the early, early years. <laughs> oh, man, it's great. He's so funny. He's comedy gold. <laughs> well, there's your streaming do's and don'ts for the week. Since it's my pick for Near Dark, that means it's my week for Good Neighbor, Bad Neighbor. Going along with uh, the thematic score of the All Hate Mail episode. Oh, interesting. Uh, well, no, I'm going to go with the thematic. Fun shaving, s- bad neighbor. <laughs> Vaughn shaving cream, not good. Now, if it was Vaughn's shaving cream, like he uses the Vaughn's name brand shaving cream, good neighbor. Mm-hmm. Probably nice. smell pretty nice. That's a really dumb joke. Hey, were you in Bill and Ted's as death? If I was, you wouldn't be talking to me. <laughs> I'd be at a Comic-Con signing $40 fucking autographs. <laughs> Uh, this is the all vampire episode, and I just stole my shit from the commercial. Oh, starting with <laughs> Blade. I'm pretty sure that Blade. If you live next to a warehouse full of explosives, you've already got problems. But he still manages to make it a situation where you have a bad neighbor. Yeah, I. I don't know. I he would be one of those neighbors that I'd be like, oh my god, you'd see him coming up the street and be like, behind the couch, behind the couch, turn off the light. Like you just you wouldn't want him to know that you were home. He's got to be up there with the worst neighbors. I think it's pretty obvious. Blade is quite crappy. <laughs> yeah. <neighbor>. yeah. <laughs> like, I think he might protect you from vampires. Not because he cares about you, just because he, he wants cares. to kill the vampires. He wants to kill the if vampires. If you die collaterally, he's not going to give a he shit. He doesn't care so much. Yeah. No. I, and best case scenario, he wrecks your house. And he doesn't seem like he's very clean, so I bet he smells. He looks cool, though, in all that leather. leather. Leather, Yeah, Uh, he's going to smell. Yeah, living in a warehouse. Uh, No, Blade is a bad neighbor. The Frog Brothers. Bad neighbors. Oh, Oh, God. I don't know. Bad neighbors. Okay. They They like comic books. They like comic books. Yeah. They drink beer. They drink beer. They would see you one Halloween dress up as a vampire and then stalk you. They would kill you. Obsessively. They... Throwing garlic at you when you walked by their trailer in the middle of the day. Now, let's just they say... They are not that... so good at judges on who is a vampire and who is not a vampire. But... They will kill either. When they figure out that you are not a vampire and they don't kill you, they kind of become your best friends. Because they're over at your house eating your food. They're unwanted best friends. <laughs> <laughs> they're like, oh, I see you bought a lemon meringue pie today, Marie Claire's. I guess we'll be coming over for dinner later? Or they just knock on your door about dinner time, like, is that is that uh, barbecue I smell? <laughs> and they pre- pretend there's a vampire scare just so they can like eat some of your pizza. Yeah, they're like, oh, the Domino's guy just pulled up to their house. 
I, I think the Frog Brothers are, would, are the type of people that only eat weird food. Dude, they're mooches. Like minced meat pie or uh, uh, blood pudding. They probably or... carry their own garlic powder well, around Well, they don't with eat them. blood pudding because they hate vampires. But yeah. uh, just weird foods. Not, they, they don't, I don't, I don't pot see... pies. They probably eat a lot of pot pies. A lot pies. of pot pies. Well, yeah, Hungry pot man pies. dinners. Yeah, hungry man dinners. But if you're, you're having a barbecue and you're like, hey, you want to come over for some ribs? They'd be like, ribs? Uh, yeah. How, how typical. See, I don't see them eating your food. I see how them just suburban. drinking your beer. Yeah, drinking your beer a lot. Yeah, which leads to eating your food. No, I think that they, they eat weird food. They've already had a hungry man. They're ready for drinking. Ugh, bad neighbors. And I, they probably like smell because they live in this really tiny, condensed little place. Well, in the when they get older, he lives in an Airstream. Yeah, Grody, he, am, he's not washing I'm, his crotch. I'm with Jackie. I think they're bad neighbors. They're, they're on the by verge. the rules of good neighbor, bad neighbor. You cannot be just a mediocre neighbor. You must be one or the other. Yeah. Their fence is tipped they're, towards they're, bad neighbor. They've turned the corner to bad neighbor, but they they almost 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 made it to good neighbor. Yeah, yeah their Christmas decorations is garlic a uh, garlic stranded together. <laughs> Instead of lights, they just have garlic <laughs> that's hanging up everywhere. You want me to edit that one out? <laughs> yes. Or do you want to just try it again? Garly. Gar- garland. Garly, garlic. Garlic. Garland. Garlic. Garlic. <laughs> uh, last but not least, Buffy. I'd get tired of the boobs after three days. Bad neighbor. Good neighbor. Somebody to go shopping with and uh, get Ooh. some hair tips and some nail tips from. You know, keeps me keeps me up on the... Her ultimate weapon is her keen fashion sense. Yeah. And she could keep me up to date. I, I would look hip all the time. But then there would come a point where I would get too old to be hip. And I'd be like, I'm sorry, I have to wear these old lady orthopedics. I got bad feet. And then she'd be like, oh, total bummer. And I'd be like, listen, you bitch, get off my yard. So a good neighbor up to a point until I get too old to be hip. It's one or the other, one or the Jackie. other. I'm going oh, I'm to do the same thing as the Frog Brothers. It would have been. I think she's as good a neighbor as a valley girl can be, but I cannot be neighbors with a valley girl, bad neighbor. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm, yeah, I'm going to have to go with bad neighbor. Eventually, it would get old. Well, you guys forgot the fatal flaw. She's a teenage girl. Inherently, valley girl. Oh, yeah. she is a bad a neighbor. Bad neighbor. Yeah, yeah, bad neighbor just for that reason alone. Doesn't yep. matter how awesome she is, whether she's Buffy or Supergirl. She's a teenager. She's out. Yep. Yep. We're just a, we hate teenagers on this show. Plus, she'd be bringing that Xander doofus all over all the time. Oh, Ugh. that guy. Uh, At least Chris Bory is Angel, whatever his name is. Who knows? Yeah. Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? Oh, welcome to the studio. We've got... Uh, In the old country, we have no neighbors. Who we bowl here. They're all bad. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> In Mother Russia. <laughs> neighbors fork you. <laughs> Not road. What? Who's writing this? <laughs> what a country. <laughs> Sam, tell us about Near Dark. Near Dark is Academy Award winning director Catherine Bigelow's second. Oh, Catherine Bigelow. Catherine Bigelow. Feature length oh, film. Oh, she's uh, She makes tea. She was from that uh Hurt Locker movie. Yeah. After uh her Is that first... the one with all the dongs in it? No. <laughs> oh, that was game day or something like that. Never mind. <laughs> After her first feature length film, The Loveless. Her freshman effort, starring Willem Dafoe and Robert Gordon. Before her dance with Oscar success, she was dry humping the Razzies with titles such as Blue Steel, Point Break, and K-19 Widowmaker. I hesitate to say this film because Near Dark currently holds an 88% on Rotten Tomatoes. Dun, dun, dun. A mere four percentage points away from the highest stinker madness title, Splash. Dun, dun, dun. Which had 92, of course. Oh, so this might be a good movie, then. I am rolling the dice with this one. Something happened to Catherine Bigelow in the seven years between K-19 Widowmaker and The Hurt Locker. It could be seen as a point of mystique, or she had a life-changing experience. It could have been that she met Mark Bowl, who wrote both of the movies The Hurt Locker and Zero Dark Thirty. I don't know, I'm just saying. Hmm. Just saying. Mm -hmm. That same guy wrote both of those, and they're real good. Yeah, those are both good movies. Yeah. I might also say things like, maybe she changed his ending that wasn't dumb, because I thought The Hurt Locker was an Academy Award winner, if you took the last 15 fucking minutes out of it. I'm with you there. Near Dark was co-written by Eric Red. Red almost died in a car rash in... Red almost died in a car crash in 2000. Kind of. He was the cause of a car accident resulting in a double fatality. When faced with it, he picked up a piece of the broken glass and slit his own throat. Uh, what? 
He tried to kill himself when he saw the dead people that he killed. Oh my god, that's And it didn't terrible. work. He slit his own throat with some of the broken glass and he lived. I don't, like, whoa, I thought that there was going to be, like, a Twilight Zone joke. No, or, like, no, this he is... he woke some... up in the hospital with a pig face or something, but Wow, no. that's sad. That sucks, man. Heavy things, man. Yeah. Just like that fish song. Yeah, yeah, you just totally brought us all just down. Like, just I like hope like you have something better just to like tell how, us. how good the crow is. Just yeah. like it. Well, uh, it, good things that he did. Uh, he has written and directed seven films, and he wrote another four, including this one, and the famed classic, The Hitcher. Oh, The Hitcher, With yeah. uh, C, C. Thomas Howell and Rucker Hauer, a uh, Harmon film. Uh, yeah. Adrian Pasdar, you will remember him, or his stand-in for being the worst diver in history of diving. It is documented in the credit sequence of Solar Babies. <laughs> <laughs> you will also remember him as flat top guy from the Marvel show that no one watches. Flat top guy from the Marvel show that no one watches. Agents of Shield, flat top guy. He's the Colonel. Oh, he was also on Heroes. He's the brother. Yeah, dude, of Adrian Heroes. Pasdar has been. Yeah. This guy has been working. Yeah. I didn't even uh, look him up. That's why that was my joke. The flat top. So guy from the show. him and Paxton teamed up on Marvel Agents of Heroes. Uh, of oh, Shield, reunion. yeah. Reunion. No, they talk about all the aliens people that are in this film, but a lot of them make it into Marvel Agents of Shield, and later we'll talk about somebody else who was in Solar Babies. So there's a little you already Solar did Babies talk reunion. Talk about something. well, Adrian Pasdar, but there's someone else. Uh-oh. Oh. Patrick Swayze. He also played linebacker for the Florida Gators. I don't know if he ever saw the field. He got in a car accident, but he was recruited and made the team as a linebacker, as a freshman. Lance Henriksen basically lives on this show. Yeah. Lance Henriksen's here all the time. Frequenter. You will remember Jeanette Goldstein, not fondly, as the sassy Hispanic tough chica in Aliens. Sure. Yeah. Oh, Uh, what the hell is her name? It's like... Something Hispanic. Yeah, something Hispanic. Pedro. But, but it's kind Gonzales of... Gonzalez or offensively something. Offensively Hispanic. Yeah, it's bad. The, well, she's apparently Jewish. Huh. Either way, uh, as a side note, the getting to know you sequence in Aliens with the Space Marines is about the worst shit ever. Mm-hmm. And she's a big part of that. Yes, she so, is. And she's in this, too. It's very... Uh, I, I think that scene is a lot of the inspiration behind the entire movie Sabotage, where it's just bro talk. And they, uh, fuck your face. No, fuck your face. Yeah, fuck no, it face. is. It's No, fuck your face. The sabotage is that scene for an entire movie. Yeah. Hmm. And then they take their shirts off and play beach volleyball. Boom. Oh, wait, different movie. You yeah. know, I think we're going to have to put gay. a warning on this episode for all the F-bombs you've dropped. Fuck them. <laughs> fuck, can I get back to this? Fuck. <laughs> uh, that was a decent Keanu right there. Yeah. I want my clothes laundered. James Cameron tried to give Bigelow a hand-me-down cast from Aliens, hence Henriksen, Paxton, and Goldstein, because they were almost married at this point. They get married after this movie. Oh, is that, made. Yeah. yeah, that's right. Oh, my uh, God. That guy is a fucking record, man. Gets around. Yeah, he is. The word vampire is never used in this film. I, I actually knew that coming yeah. into this. It's a fun fact. Both Red and Bigelow were heart set on making a Western. This isn't very long after the Gonzo Western Silverado really just broke the bank on the entire genre, mm-hmm. and Westerns weren't going to happen anymore, and subsequently that collapse of the genre caused their Western movie to not happen, so they just tossed in some vamps, and voila, mm-hmm. you have this movie instead, just toss some vamp. it was a genre mix, yeah. by just tossing vampires into it and then not having to shoot in the past. Hmm. Producers told Bigelow she could be easily replaced if she showed any fault in the first five days of shooting. She didn't. She made the movie. But they were going to fire her because she was a woman. She Pieces showed them shit. wrong. And then she, she danced on their graves, probably, if they're not dead, then just dumped some vodka on her sofa. <laughs> Said, fuck you guys. I'm an Academy Award winner. I want it all. That guy that wrote it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's what she did. Uh... The cinema in the film is playing the movie Aliens because they're just so in love, I guess. Mm-hmm. And another kick down to the pack of friends because Paxton used to be an art director for Cameron when they all worked for uh, New Horizon Films or whichever version of the Corman business they were working for at the time. Uh, there's a billboard sprayed with Bill and Louise celebrating the love of the Paxton and his wife, Louise Newberry. I believe they're still married. John Depp and D.B. Sweeney did not have the chops to play Caleb. Adrian Pasdar beat them out. I'm John Depp. I'm John Depp. D.B. Sweeney has not done shit in a long time. D.B. Sweeney has not. They showed this Talking shit at the DB. MoMA for at some point for some reason. I know that Catherine Bigelow actually did a movie about, like, she did an installation at the Metropolitan Museum of uh, Modern Art, but I don't know that that's any excuse to show this there because you like her. 
Yeah. Because as much as fun as this is and all that, MoMA? Really? MoMA? Yeah. yeah. Keep an eye out. And there's a lot of people to keep an eye out in this one, but I'm only going to pick three because they're my favorites. Tim Thomerson. Tim Thomerson. Classic Ther- stinker actor. Teresa Randall, The Hotness. Who's and Teresa Randall? Teresa Randall, if you ever watched any uh, Spike Lee movies, she's the real hot one. She's the top, the, you know, Teresa A. Randall is a real fine looking lady. All right. Uh, and the Solar Babies kickback, James LaGross. James LaGross. James LaGross. That's what I have. Yeah, so, uh, Near Dark, uh, it's, here's the deal. As you said, what was it on Rotten Tomatoes? 88%, but at the same time, it's a surging 88%. This was probably, there was no Rotten Tomatoes in 1987. This was not well received. At the same time, it wasn't really a flop. It almost made back its five uh, million budget. Mm-hmm. It was mm-hmm. like three and a half at theaters, which means that it was an instant payout on VHS, because that's right at the height of your VHS was selling in '87. So, modest success. It's also got a seven even user rating on IMDb. And after the last debacle that we just had with the Johnny Mnemonic, I think we're I'm going to receive some uh, some hate mail. Oh, over you'll get this some one. flack over this one. I, here, however, there's my defenses right there. Bill Paxton, Lance Hendrickson didn't make its money back in the theaters. And if Adrian Pastar does a dive in this, I mean that's bad news. And it's a B movie. He's not good at diving. B movies are always allowed on this show, no matter whether they're good or not. So if you don't like it. And if you think that we should only watch Birdemic over and over and over and over again, go fuck yourself. Well, wait, before we wrap up, I have to ask Sam, you have a very interesting piece of jewelry on this evening. Is that a Darth Vader ring? It certainly is. That is amazing. (laughs) It came in my cupcake. (laughs) I had to wash it out, and then it wasn't big enough to fit on my pinky, so I had to use a heat gun to melt it open more. Hmm. Now it might be stuck on there. So, come back on Monday after you watch New Dark with Bill Baxter and Lance Hendrickson. I'm super pumped. James LaGrosse. James LaGrosse. Yay. That Mexican Tim, lady Tim from... Tim Thomerson. Or that Jewish lady that's a Mexican Jewish lady. She's something. Yeah. Ay, ay, ay. Boo. Ay, ay, ay. Hi. Get it? Yeah, <laughs> get to the chopper. <laughs> Thank you for listening to Stinker Madness. If this is your first time, we hope you enjoyed it and we'll come back to listen more. But now, we'd like to ask all of our listeners for a small favor. We aren't ranking as high as we'd like, and we need your help. Would you please take just a couple of minutes to rate and review us on your preferred listening platform, be it iTunes, Stitcher, or wherever else you can. It takes many hours each week to bring you this show, and just a couple seconds of your time is a huge help for us. And for those of you that have already done this, We say thank you.